What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. So today I got the 2017 Audi S3 and we're gonna be doing a track day tomorrow at Thunder Hill. Now I already changed the brakes, upgraded to Cobalt XR1 pads and uh, XR2s in the rear. Um, those are race brake pads. Now I need to change the fluid. So I'm gonna be using some of this stuff right here. Uh, Castrol React SRF Racing Brake Fluid. This is the best brake fluid you can get on the market right now. So I'll put a link down to this stuff below. Just for an idea, the uh, typical wet boiling point of this stuff is in great excess of 518 degrees. Uh, most other stuff, like even race brake fluid, the Motul stuff, the RBF 660, um, doesn't come anywhere close. This is well over 100 degrees higher of a boiling point. So. It really is worth it. Now, also what I'm gonna be using is this Motive Products Power Bleeder. This is going to make life really simple. I'm gonna actually just fill this up, hook it up to the master cylinder up in the front of the car, and we're gonna be able to push new brake fluid through the system. To capture all that fluid, I'm gonna be using a Genesis Technology brake bleeder catch bottle. So this is just gonna go on the end, and it's gonna catch whatever fluid I'm pumping out. So it's gonna make life really simple. Having the proper tools for this are uh, definitely gonna make life easy. Really, I mean, all in all, I think I'm in this 120 bucks. I'm sure you're gonna pay a whole hell of a lot more at the dealership, especially if you're trying to get them to add, you know, some racing brake fluid that's gonna up the price substantially. So yeah. Gonna go ahead and start on the car. So when bleeding a brake system, first thing you're gonna wanna do is find the appropriate bleeding pattern. On this car, it's gonna be passenger rear, which is the furthest line from the master cylinder, which is up there. So I'm gonna go right rear, I'm gonna go left rear, then I'm gonna go right front and left front. The brake master cylinder is right there. I'm gonna go ahead, wipe this area down. You don't wanna get any dirty contaminants in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the cap off. Then I'm gonna suck any excess fluid out. That way I'm not pushing the old fluid through the system and I can just get the new fluid into the system much quicker. Now I'm gonna take my Motive Power Bleeder, take the appropriate hose and hook this connection to my master cylinder cap connection. This is for the fluid reservoir right here. Now that I have that hooked up, I'm gonna go ahead and pump this handle until I get 15 PSI on the gauge, which is halfway in the middle here, or one bar. So now you can see I'm at 15 PSI, and the tank is empty. This is where we're gonna fill up the tank and put fluid in. However, I definitely recommend before putting fluid into this container that you make sure that you have no leaks and that you're all sealed up. If you have leaks somewhere, you're gonna wanna tighten those fittings up and just make sure you can find those leaks first. So now that I see I don't have any leaks in the system, I'm gonna go ahead, take this wheel off, and then we can install this so we can capture the excess fluid. Also, after I take my wheels off, I'm gonna be switching to the uh, VMRs. These have NT01s on them, 235, 35R19s. The NT01s are a great track tire. And uh, the VMR wheels are working great. You do wanna take the center caps out, however, because when tracking a car you run into issues with heat from the brakes as you can see right here it actually melted that last track day and you can see these areas right here are all melted too so these were actually gonna fly off they do recommend taking this out however I was in Monterey and I did not have a jack with me so yeah that's something you're gonna want to do if you have a track day coming up okay so with the wheel off you can see I'm at my back rotor now these have a nice little cap that protects the bleeder from getting any dust or grime in it which is definitely good after that you want to find your bleeder and then you need to find the appropriate wrench. All right, so as you can see, I got my brake bleeder wrench over the top here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the catch can. So I went ahead and put that on the brake bleeder. An ideal configuration is gonna have this hose at a higher point. That way all the fluid can travel up and around. This goes into the bottom, this catch can, and this is also gonna make sure it captures all the fluid and doesn't allow any air back into the lines. All right, so now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and relieve the pressure from here. When you do that, you wanna make sure you do it slowly. That way, uh, if there is any fluid, it doesn't give you like an influx or a rush or a bubble. Uh, and then I'm gonna pour the brake fluid into the reservoir. All right, so using a sealed bottle, you wanna make sure the bottle is sealed. That way it has not been exposed to any elements or anything like that. Uh, we are gonna Rip this open 
and pour this fluid in. Do not spill this anywhere as it will corrode paint. We wanna make sure it is nice and clean. We can see how clean it is. So my other fluid had much of a yellow tint. This is looking very, very clear. So that is gonna give me a good idea of how my fluid should look when it's basically transferred over. I mean, you can see it in the bucket. It does look, well, it's a little bit, has a yellow tint to it, obviously, like brake, brake, brake fluid usually does. But hopefully I can tell a difference. We wanna make sure that we have good pressure in it. That way we don't go back down to zero. That way it's basically acting like we are pumping the brakes. This gets away from the two man bleeding technique that you're used to. All right, so now all I should have to do is crack the bleeder. Once I do that, fluid should start to transfer. As we can see, it is starting to come through. It is looking pretty yellow. And what I want it to do is just keep on transferring. So I can see it slowly filling up the bottle here. What I'm gonna keep an eye on is look for a uh, fluid color change. Now, from what I can see in the hose, it is starting to look nice and clear compared to the fluid when I first started out, it had a bit more of a yellow tint. So I think I'm almost there. I kind of checked on the front. I'm making sure that I have a proper PSI when I'm doing this, and I'm just checking the fluid color. It is slowly filling. It does take a while. However, you know, patience is a virtue. It's very simple. This is much easier than doing a two-person technique. And in a second here, I'm gonna be able to crack this off, close it down, move on to the next wheel. When doing this, it is very important to wear safety glasses. Also, some gloves are very important too. Got the sweet ass pit vipers, so, you know, we're keeping it stylish while staying safe. Uh, yeah, we're gonna continue on on the rest of the brakes. Like I said, I'm gonna go to the left rear, right front, and left front. I don't think you guys really need to revisit that process as it's fairly simple. It's the same thing, I'm just doing it repetitively. Once I do that, close everything off, put the new wheels on, should be good to go. Great, that was very clean, very simple, super easy, well worth the investment in picking up the proper tools. Again, link down below. I'm gonna finish these all up, switch out to my race wheels, and we'll be ready to go for tomorrow. So, pretty much done with the left rear. As you can see, that fluid is bubble free and super clear, so it is ready to go. We're still going strong with the power bleeder. I just make sure to keep it pumped up to 15 PSI and it stays good. Have the new cobalt uh, race pads in here, so also new rotors as well, because my old rotors were turfed uh, from that Laguna track day. My biggest issue with the Laguna track day were brakes. Definitely made me drive uh, a whole lot slower because I needed brakes and they were going away. There is a bleeder screw on the front, so we're gonna do the same thing. Crack that, bleed it out until it's clear. All right, so I am done bleeding the brake system. Uh, so now what I need to do is just go ahead and disconnect this. When I do that, it's gonna relieve pressure. As you can see, there's still about 12 PSI in there. I pumped it a few times because this is an area you wanna keep really, really clean, put new gloves on. Also got those pit vipers on so you know we're ready for uh, some crap spraying in our face if possible. Uh, we're gonna relieve pressure off this very slowly. You're gonna see the PSI drop. Seeing it drop slowly. Slowly, you'll hear a little hiss in a second here. Boom. All right, so that relieved all pressure off of the tank. Now what we got is we got this right here. So we wanna make sure we be careful with this while removing the cap, because as you can see right down there, there's still a bit of brake fluid in it. So we wanna make sure that we're uh, not dripping that over anything because brake fluid is very, very corrosive and we don't wanna get it on any paint any of this nice carbon fiber or anything like that. All right, so I'm gonna kind of just let that hang out for a second here. Uh, that way it can drip back into the fluid reservoir and I can uh, clean this out. You use denatured alcohol for cleaning this. You wanna get it all through there as brake fluid is very corrosive. All right, so brake fluid is all cleaned up. Uh, the one thing I could still do to this car to help out and I may do in the future is replace it to some steel braided brake lines. Um, this process is gonna be made so much simpler by that brake bleeder. Wow, I mean, that thing's awesome. I think kinda everybody knows that bleeding brakes is one of the most pain in the ass things to do on a car. Um, it just It's just one of those things, you usually need two people, but this made it amazing. I would highly recommend this product. Drop down on the link below, pick one of these up guys if you plan on doing anything to your braking system. Uh, this was for a European models, it worked for like BMWs, Audi, Fiat, all that type of stuff. 
uh, but you can get a domestic one works on GM Ford all of that too so I'll put both of those descriptions down there and links to those helps out my channel if you guys buy those from my links and uh, thanks a lot guys thanks for watching talk to you soon later and wrench on <laughs> <laughs>